Hello everyone, I'm Governor Mara Dixon and I'm the Managing Director for Government Solutions. Now, Government Solutions is a consulting firm that assists health professionals such as doctors with product sourcing strategies as well as the starting and the managing of medical laboratories. Now, today I just like to talk to you about this book, Molecular Diagnostics for the Clinical Laboratorian. And this book is edited by William Coleman, Gregory Sangalis. Those are two of the editors. This is the second edition for the book, Molecular Diagnostics for Clinical Laboratorian. So that's a cover page right there. You can see some genetic related things. Looks like an antibody. Yeah. yeah. And some genes, some chromosomes over this side. Anti. And this is an antibody. Yeah. So, Alright, so I'm just going to go in straight into the table of contents so you can have an idea as to what this book is all about. Table of contents, you know, part one is the introduction, the history, perspective on clinical diagnostic lab. Part two is the basic molecular biology. So that has to do with the overview of nucleic acid chemistry, structure and function foundations of molecular biology, extraction of nucleic acids, nucleic acid blotting techniques, theory and practice, the polymerase chain reactions, bioinformatics, computer-based approaches to genetic analysis. So that's part two, which is the basic molecular biology. So all of those extraction of nucleic acid, nucleic acid blotting techniques, PCR bioinformatics. Now part three is about molecular diagnostic technologies. It has to do with PCR based methods for mutation detection, alternative methods for amplified nucleic acid testing, electrophoretic methods for mutation detection and DNA sequencing, single nucleotide polymorphism, so that is testing DNA variation for disease association. Microarray approaches to green to gene expression analysis. Methods for analysis of DNA methylation. So that is part three, which is the molecular diagnostic technology. So it's the PCR based methods. Alternative methods for applied amplified nucleic acid testing, electrophoretic methods electrophoresis, methods for analysis of DNA methylation. So part four is other class clinical diagnostic technologies of flow cytometry, medical cytogenetics, fluorescence, in situ hybridization, that is fish, immunohistochemistry, laser capture, microdissection, so that is the clinical diagnostic technologies. Now, quality assurance is part five in the molecular diagnostic lab. So the framework for quality assurance in molecular diagnostic uh, verification of molecular assays, standards, and standardization of molecular diagnostic laboratory developed tests in molecular diagnostics. So those are the quality assurance areas in the molecular diagnostic lab. So verification of molecular assays, those ones, standards and standardization of molecular diagnostics. So part six, amplification of molecular diagnostics for genetic diseases, an overview of molecular genetics, genetic basis of neurologic and neuromuscular diseases. Those are two. We're talking about molecular mechanisms of endocrine disorders. Molecular pathogenesis of cardiovascular disease, molecular diagnostics in coagulation, cystic fibrosis, 
prenatal genotyping for identification of fetuses at risk for immune cytopenic disorders, personalized medicine. It has to do with um, pharmacogenetics or genomics. Amplification of molecular diagnostics for human cancers, that's part 7. It's so talking about molecular pathogenesis of human cancer. Application of molecular diagnostics to hereditary non polyposis colorectal cancer and molecular, <coughs> molecular genetic ap applications to the diagnosis of lymphoma, molecular genetic abnormalities in acute and chronic leukemia. So that's part 7 and part 8 is about the applications of molecular diagnostics for infectious disease. So molecular testing for chlamydia, trachomatis and Neisseria, gonorrhea, human populum papilloma virus and molecular diagnosis for HIV 1 hepatitis C cytomegalovirus then you have applications of molecular diagnostics for identity based testing HLA typing molecular diagnostics for forensic work and parentage testing molecular assessment of bone marrow transplant engraftment, use of DNA based identity testing for specimen identification. Then you have issues for molecular pathology lab and that has to do with genetic counseling as well as ethical, social and legal issues related to molecular genetic testing. Alright. This is the introduction. So the historical perspective. So basically it tells you that as the clinical laboratory has entered the 21st century, it is interesting to reflect on past scientific and social events that have influenced the status of the laboratory and to anticipate future problems and opportunities. It would be a mistake to suggest that all the specific significant medical and social events that have an impact on the present laboratory function can be discussed or evaluated in this introductory chapter. So the history of diagnostic testing can be started by reviewing the evolution of diagnostic testing from isolated procedures to organized diagnostic laboratory testing. So originally laboratory tests were performed at the side of the patient with small, simple equipment, rapid evaluation of the result and a diagnostic opinion rendered. Test choice, performance and interpretation were all left to the individual practitioner. There was no professional support staff to assist in any point in the process. Little exchange took place between practitioners because the individual process was directly related to their procedures, to which procedures were done and the manner in which they were done. So that's some information about the history that you might be interested in. So the earliest medicine, long before there were laboratories, there were accepted practices for patient evaluation. The early healthcare providers attempted to determine health status of patients under evaluation by all means possible. Diagnosis and prescribed treatment were not always an accurate or scientific based pronouncement. The process was motivated by a combination of altruism, vanity, greed, scientific thought, and philosophical and religious edit. Urinalysis continued to be such a focus of study that Gilles de Carbeil developed a glass vessel shaped like a urinary bladder specifically for the examination of urine. The concept was that the urine sediments and the discoloration which occur in the vessel at a place that corresponded to the site of pathology in the body. These early urine vessels were among the first pieces of laboratory equipment 
and were so common and identifiable that they were one of the predecessors to the caduceus as a symbol of of medicine. Alright, so thank you so much for your time. If you need more information, you can Google Governor Mar Dixon or Government Solutions. You can also go to Amazon.com where the books are available. Personalize your medical lab. That's one of the books. And the seals in laboratory medicine. Thank you.